Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Man, do I got a crazy story for y'all today. But before we get into the story, and y'all seen the title of the video, I need to touch on something. So apparently, you know, every now and then I'll Google my name. Because I need to know what the little, you know, what people are saying and what some of these psychotic weirdos in the world are saying because you'd be surprised. So I Googled my name. Not my actual birth name. My nickname, Jay Williams. Williams is my last name. Jay is my nickname. And I got that nickname because I've been getting locked up for a long time. When you're locked up, they're going to call your first initial and your last name for everything. So if your name is Jeremiah Williams, they're going to say, Jay Williams, you have a visit. Jay Williams, you have mail. Jay Williams, you're going to the hole. Jay Williams, everybody in the world forgot about you. They don't call your first name. They call your first initial and your last name. So since a young age, I'd get out and I'd link up with people I was in the detention center with guys I was in jail with people just started calling me Jay I go by Jay I don't like my birth name I don't like my real name it's attached to my father and his side of the family nothing against his side of the family but I don't like that name just because of where it come from tell me why and checking Jay Williams let's live life last night like I told you I do I come across, and this is news to me, that 19 days ago, somebody posted something that I'm now a sex offender. In 2015, I was given five years, and I'm a sex offender. Hmm. My son was born August 4th. 2017 this would have been in the time frame that I was in prison for being this uh, sex offender thing they tried to call me that would also mean that I got out I guess in uh, what would it be I, I would have gotten out in 2020 so my construction company that's been running over 6 years would have just started last year I guess I'm going to show you all this before we get in to today's story it's unbelievable the lengths people will go when they can't discredit you and they can't throw dirt on your name and they can't do anything to hurt you because you are solid. It's crazy the time people will spend, the lengths they will go to in order to try to make you look like a bad person. And just so y'all know, if you go back and look at some of my videos where I've shown my prison ID, I came out with all these tattoos. All the stuff on my neck has been here. For the longest time. All of it. It's all been here for a very, very long time. Some of it's over 10 years old. But now all of a sudden you'll see in these pictures. My tattoos have disappeared. I've gotten some new tattoos. Have my throat slit. I got um, one ear. Um, one of my eyebrows is gone. The other one doesn't even. My eyebrows, see they come to a point. This eyebrow comes in like rounds off. Uh, half my head is like smashed in. Like I got hit with a shovel. Um, the, the, the scars on my forehead are gone everything and then, then all of a sudden I have this hairline that comes down like this when in reality I don't even grow hair why do you think I got a bald head you think I just like having a bald head you think I like being cold in the winter time you think I like having stock in new era and Mitchell and Ness come on now y'all gotta do better than this let's get into my reaction of what one of you clowns you goofies you overweight mama boys who sit in the basement saying, Mama, bring me more Twinkies and milk. Don't worry about what I'm doing with the dog. He likes it. One of you weirdos attempted to do to me and my name. Okay, let's check this out. By Hannah Eason. I'm guessing she works for the actual news. Published February 26th, 2015 at 10.51. Oh, wow, look, Henrico Man. 
by Hannah Easton, February 26, 2021, at the exact same time, 1051. What in the holy sloth hell in the Kentucky Fried Crack House is going on with that head? Then, where is my ear? There's my actual ear. Where's the other ear? Where is my eyebrow? Whose eyebrow is that? What is up with that hairline? You can see where my eyebrow is supposed to be, and they tried to put the other one on, but instead it just made me look like some type of a burn victim. And then over here, do you not know how to blend, homeboy? Like, you can actually see where my hat would have sat on my actual head. And then these tattoos. And this cut throat. Where's the rest of my beard? You've got to be kidding me, huh? Y'all have got to come better than this. Whoever that head belongs to, I'm not even sure he's alive. Definitely looks like somebody hit him with a shovel or a brick or something. And I guess all my tattoos fell off. Then I went on to get my throat cut and I got new tattoos put on. But yeah, there's your actual report with Henrico removed, his picture removed, Richmond put in, and the worst Photoshop job ever. My neck, why is it so red? Why does it look like somebody attempted to hang me? This is just crazy, man. And also, this. See this? Jay Williams. Jay is not my birth name, you moron. The news doesn't do coverage on guys' nicknames. And they also don't put captions up top. You people kill me, man. Honestly. Go ahead. Tell them why you mad, son. Tell them why you mad. I'm saying. I'm saying. Come on, man. Anybody knows who did this? Please holler at me so I can tighten their ass up. Please let me know. If you're under the age of 18, you can't expect that I will take my belt off and whoop your little ass like your mom and dad should be doing. You're going to have to come out that basement or I'm coming down there and I'm going to whoop your little ass with my belt. If you're over the age of 18... I'm going to take your laptop, your computer, your mama's tablet, whatever it is you use to do all that with, and I'm going to do my best to reconstruct your head the way that that head that you put my face on looked like. We're going to work on that. There's some weird people in this world. I knew I'd have to deal with a little dumb shit. I never expected in a million years. That somebody would go to the lengths of that. Be careful out here, people. There are some weirdos in the world. Damn glad I got eyebrows again. Glad my ears are back. Glad I still have my beard. And I'm really glad that I ain't got a damn dent inside of my head. That would be whack as a bitch. Anyways, today we are going to get into, after all that <laughs> craziness, we're going to get into sex offenders in general population. How did this happen? Everybody says the East Coast is messing up. Man, I can't argue. But I can try to break down how this happened and how it got to this point. And it's not just the East Coast. Everybody wants you to believe that it's just the East Coast. It's not. People can say whatever they want, paint whatever picture they want. It's not just the East Coast. I've talked to dudes all over the world, all over the United States, and they say the same thing. People know why they're in there. They just kind of stay away from me, don't talk to me, don't bother me, don't ever try to kick it with me. Stay over there for you get hurt. Let's get into how did this become accepted, how it really is. Some of these dudes I've had to deal with and seen get dealt with personally. Y'all know I done seen it. You know I done lived it. So... Let's relive it. Why the hell they do that to my head? Man, I can't believe that shit. That is crazy. Had to take a second and call my wife. 
and share that clip with her. She finds it comical. She laughed hysterically. I don't really see the, the how it's comical. I don't see how it's funny. I had to share it with my foreman and some other guys. And they died laughing as well. I don't find it too comical. I'm just glad that whatever that dent was, that shit must have popped back out and my ear grew back. I don't know, I have eyebrows again, which that's a good thing, I like having eyebrows. Let's get into this story, man. Still irritated about that damn. You know, for today's video, we'll go ahead and take this off. Rock without the hat. I'm gonna throw the little thumbnail down in the pit in the corner of Slothhead, aka Jay Williams, so y'all can watch that and stare at that little funny. I think I'm more mad that they made me look so terrible. So let's get into how these sex offenders ended up on the main line and what I know to be true. I talked to a lot of old heads and these old head in prisons all have one thing in common, right? A lot of them been there a long time and a lot of them are very irritated with what prison has become, what jail has become. Look at that, two eyebrows. They said they remember a time when prison had men in it. When if you came in at 18 years old, by the time you were 21, you were a man. You were either a man or a woman. But either way, you matured. They remember a time when men filled the prison. It was men that were getting locked up. Now, you look at the average age of somebody that's coming into DOC or into the jail. It's usually between the ages of 18 to 27. It's what a large... Pause. Red Bull. It's what a large majority of the prison population consists of. Youngins. Would you have youngins getting locked up all the time? Principles. Morals. Things like that don't come into play. They've turned the penitentiary into a playground. It's a place where dudes joke around and play with each other all day. Gangs strive. The things guys should be focused on, they're really not. Instead of guys focusing on this dude over here that messed with somebody's children or violated a bunch of women in the middle of the night, they're focused on gang politics, selling drugs, joking, playing around, walking on the yard, beating people up. The introduction of females into DOC. Nothing against you ladies, nothing against female officers was one of the worst things to ever happen. It started taking guys focus off of doing time and where they were at. Now they started focusing on the females, not paying attention to what's going on around them, thinking that this woman likes them. Gunning became a major thing. Gunning being a guy over in the shadows when nobody's looking, doing his thing. There's a lot of that in prison. You're going to get used to it. I'm not going to say you can get used to it. You're going to get used to it taking place. It happens every day, more than anybody will ever realize, a lot of that happens. With all these young dudes coming in, the introduction of females, all the gangs, the morals and principles and all that respect going out the window, people really stopped caring what other guys were locked up for. Ah, oh, man, he's all right, he's cool. Some dudes actually feel like that. Now, when you hear people talk about producing paperwork, oh, we make them show paperwork. Let me break this down to you. When you get arrested, they give you the papers that consist of the charges on why you're going to court. You've got a robbery charge. You've got one paper that says robbery, such, such offense, code date, such, such offense, court, such, such offense. Gun charge, same thing. If that's why you're in prison, those are the papers you're going to have. Say you had done 25 years in the past, five years, three years. 10 years, 15 years, whatever. And you've been in prison for a sex offender charge. When you come back on these new charges, it's not going to say anything about that on your new charges. It's just going to state why you're locked up. So somebody can show you their paperwork, but it's only consistent of why they're currently in prison. Guys go home. I've actually been on the yard with somebody, and this is a fact, that I knew why they were in prison. I go to the whole that person gets shipped and goes home. Years later, 
that person shows back up on the compound that I'm at has been rearrested and now has sex crimes and I never knew the difference. I never even knew the guy went home. You get what I'm saying? Like, I know why he's in prison. Last time I checked, he got shipped here. Now he's back in prison with me at this prison thinking he transferred back in, never knowing he goes home. So how, why would you, why would I recheck his background if I already know about him? Then you got dudes for the most part, that just mind their business. Unless everybody knows why somebody's locked up, nobody knows. Today I'm gonna get into a story of an old white dude that I did time with, that at first I felt bad for the man, and then everything came to light. Years ago I'm in this pod, and this is old white man that sleeps down from me, about 10 cells down from me, all the way at the end of the run. Dudes were robbing this dude. When I mean robbing him, robbing him blind. Taking everything he had. Everywhere he went, he told it a Bible. He kept a rosary around his neck. He kept a little homemade cross around his neck that was made out of mop strings. And had like a little cardboard cross that had been threaded up with thread on it. Always wore this religious stuff. Went to Bible study. Prayer meetings. Attended every type of church meeting you could think about. Every time he would go to commissary. His cellmate would wait till he wasn't looking. Let dudes come in and just take all his stuff. Take everything. Rob him. Take it all from him. I'd see him sitting out at the table and he'd be crying. At first, I felt bad for him. I'm like, damn, man. These dudes are just robbing this old man. They're just putting this old man through the ringer. This is an old man. When I mean old, I'm talking probably in his 80s. Late 80s, mid 80s. This went on for very 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 long time when I mean a long time upwards of probably seven eight months every time he went to commissary his stuff would get taken he would take his commissary to other people that he thought he could trust and be like hey can you hold my commissary and I'll come get it from you because if I put it in my cell guys are just gonna go in there and take it well the guy he'd give it to to hold guys come up there be like what's up with his commissary and he'd be like shit throw some of it in my box take it I don't care they took this man's TV, his clothes, everything he owned. And the, the the group of dudes that were doing it, was it was a group of just random dudes. It wasn't gang members. And just whoever wanted to eat that day would go take his stuff, right? I come to find out the man was a sex offender. His cellmate had told everybody, I'm in a cell with a chomo. Man has been locked up a very, very, very long time for messing with those kids. He would invite people in to take his stuff. Sometimes he would just take his stuff and dump it into his bag and make it seem like other people came in there. He would take his TV when the guy wasn't around, go out in the pod and sell it to somebody else. The guy would just wait, go buy a new TV. A couple months later, his new TV would show up. A couple days later, that TV would get stolen and sold as well. CD player, sneakers, his Pro Tems, everything he ordered got stolen or sold like I said I felt bad for the man watching him I watched this grown man sit out at the table and pray out loud dear Lord why are you doing this to me why are you allowing this to happen to me you know why I didn't do nothing wrong you know I'm innocent in this matter I've been in prison most of my life and I ain't even done nothing to nobody I ain't never harmed no females harmed no children dear Lord why is this happening to me there was too much evidence Dude that showed other people his, his his paperwork, stuff he found where this dude had been filing appeals. There was too many people saying he had done these things for him not to do it. It might be a lie if one person comes forward and accuses you. I can see that happening. I've seen that happen. I've seen men do time for things they didn't do. But I've never seen a man be accused by multiple people, multiple children, for doing something like that that was innocent. Not, there's no reason a whole group of children, women, a whole group of anybody would lie against you for something like that. Unless you had done something wrong or they had something to gain. Children that had never met each other aren't going to tell a similar story about something you've done unless you've done it. At the end of the day, I had no pity for him. I had seen much worse done to those dudes. Much, much worse. And what he got was, it was easy he got let off the hook easy in my eyes. 
They allowed him to live, allowed him to walk around. He'd get to slap up every now and then. He'd come out of cell every now and then with a couple of whelps and bruises on him. And then Sally would do it to him. But he stayed in the cell with that man because if the worst he had to deal with was possibly getting slapped around and his stuff stolen, it's much worse than him ending up in a cell with somebody like Dog. It's much worse than, you know, it's not worse, much better than him ending up in a, in a cell with somebody like the dude I told y'all from Philly. A lot of these dudes, they're right there. Tap in, let them know. You don't always know why somebody's locked up. You can think you do, but you don't. You don't really know why they're locked up. You only know why they're currently locked up. And then along the way, I was amazed this guy still had folders of paperwork after all those years. Because along the way, most people out here don't have that paperwork no more. By the time I exhausted my appeals, I threw all that stuff away. I didn't need it no more. So yeah, sex offenders are on the main line. They are in general population. And if you think for one second that they've ran 100% of them out of population, you're wrong. It doesn't even make sense. Why would you run somebody off and make them PC up or go live in the hole the rest of their life when you could just extort them and rob them and make their life a living hell every single week? Why would somebody run them all off when you could just let them order their commissary, order their television, order new clothes and go shopping off of them every week? Because I've seen it done time and time again. Let's get into the next story. Put my damn hat back on. This bullshit. There was another instance, man, where we had a young dude named Ty. I don't know why they called him Ty, where he got his name from. I don't know. He was like a Vietnamese kid. But he was one of Vietnamese kids that looked like his dad might have been black. Like he was mixed black and Vietnamese or black and some type of Asian. A shout out to all my Asians, man. Before we get into this story, let me make this clear. Sex offenders come in every race, every color, every size, every gender. You think about it, there's a sex offender in that category. So never am I singling anybody out, just the individuals in the story. We have a young dude named Ty. Ty is, my guess would be, Ty had to turn 21 in prison, maybe 22 23 years old Ty was in a cell with a bigger black dude That had been down A while When You know when you ask somebody How long you been down They be like a while That means they have been down a long time Somebody's been down two three years I tell you you know I ain't been down but a three piece Or I've been down five When you ask somebody how much time they got Or how long they been down And they say a while That means they have been in prison a very long time His cellmate had been in prison a very long time I would never see Ty talk to anybody. Ty would come out the cell, go to the microwave, make his food, make his coffee. I'd see Ty walking the yard with his cellmate all by himself, and nobody talked to this dude. Nobody. I thought he was just really, really quiet. I thought he didn't have no friends because you meet lone wolves, neutrons, dudes like that that completely stay to themselves, and the only person they talk to is their cellmate. I've met thousands of them. Anti-social. Just stick to themselves. Over a period of time, this don't seem normal. Even a neutron will stop and say, hey, what's up? Even a neutron will comment or find somebody, even if it's just another neutron, to kick it with. Not Ty. Ty stayed all to himself. I come to find out through somebody else in there, Ty's a sex offender. Ty violated a child. Around the, he was like 18, 19 years old. We're talking a child, like under the age of 10. Ty had a rape charge. Dudes got at Ty when he first got in there. When I mean got at him, they was getting at him. They was whooping his ass in the jail, whooping his ass and receiving. His case was all over the television. When he got to prison, it was 10 times worse. Ty's family came to see him every week, kept his book strapped. I always had money on his books. This dude had fresh shoes, fresh Levi's, fresh Tim's, Levi jacket. You know what I mean? Tattoos on him looked like all like street work. Big ass dragon coming down his arm. It wrapped all around his arm with color in it. And I remember thinking to myself, if everybody knows he's a sex offender, why is he allowed to walk around? 
why is he on the yard? This is me, my introduction to him. I had been in prison long when I met this dude. Let me say, ran across this dude. I was under the impression, just like all of y'all, they don't walk around in prison. Here's the difference. Out here, we don't have a PC. We don't have a yard for sex offenders. We don't have a place where they just put sex offenders to keep them safe. Nah, what'd you do? Oh, we don't care nothing about that. We're gonna throw your ass, we're gonna throw you right in the shark tank. I don't care if you are a goldfish. You was a piranha in the streets, huh? Praying on people. We're gonna throw you in there with the sharks. Out here, when you commit those crimes, there is no hiding from what you've done. There is no special magical place that you get to go off and be like guys with, you know, similar charges. Nah, you're going right in the population. They're going to let the inmates do what they want to do to you. So like I told you, I'm questioning, like, why, why does this dude get to walk around? I understand now why he don't talk to nobody. Because now that I know his charges, you ain't never got to worry about me talking to him. Never got to worry about me doing anything. Nah, you can't get the phone next. Nah, you can't get in the microwave next. As you can see, I'm a boss. Gonna have interruptions at times since I've been only running my company a year. Um, I would never, ever, at no point have no conversations with this man. You disgust me. Despicable. I despise people like you. I got a mama out there. Two sisters. Nephews. Nieces. Aunts. People I care about. You got charges like that. Stay away from me. Don't speak to me. Don't ask me for nothing. Don't ask me who's next on the phone. Don't ask me if you can get the shower next. Don't speak to me. This dude understood that because of everything he had been through when he first got to jail, when he first got to prison. He had already been. God knows what had happened to him. I still can't understand. Why ain't nobody getting at him? Because of his cellmate. His cellmate took him. And I'm not going to say... He was doing anything funny to him. Because none of that ever came to light. Pause. Nothing like that was ever said. But his cellmate didn't get no money. His cellmate had been down a long time. People had forgotten about him. He didn't have to get out there and hustle to eat. He didn't have to make moves to eat. He just kept this dude Ty safe. And in return, Ty made sure he smoked good. Ty made sure he ate. If dude need a new pair of sneakers, Ty go order them. Oh, you ain't got no TV? I'm going to have my people send the money to somebody's books. I have my people send the money to your books. I'm going to make sure you get a TV. We'll get you one off the yard. This dude kind of became his protector, his saving grace. How do you protect a piece of shit like that? So in other words... This man was okay with it for a price. He would sit up in the cell and laugh and joke with Ty for a price. As long as he kept his belly full and gave him whatever he needed, he was going to keep the other sharks up off of him. You know what I mean? The other sharks weren't going to eat this old piranha. Because the hell is a piranha compared to a shark? That always blew my mind. Now here's what's really crazy. In due time, you and him ain't going to be cellmates no more. In due time, y'all are going to get split. Whether it's because he gets transferred or you get transferred. He goes to the hole. You go to the hole. They might just come in and switch the building up and start moving people around. You can guarantee that Ty ain't still in the cell with that man. You can guarantee that Ty has paid for his crimes over and over and over. But in my opinion, you can never, ever, ever pay for that type of crime. At the moment that you decide to steal somebody's innocence, violate somebody like that, hurt somebody like that, there is no saving you. You're going to have your day in front of God. You're going to have to explain. A lot of them guys walk around untouched. A lot of them guys walk around undetected. They tell you they're in there for murder. And at the time when I was in prison, we couldn't just call home and say, hey, jump on Google. You had to have an officer pull up their paperwork or somebody go down to the courthouse and pull up their paperwork the time that I was in prison it wasn't just click 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 and your name pops up no it didn't work like that access to why somebody was incarcerated was much harder to get every now and then dudes would put in the work to find out and then it would be trouble or it'd be cool 
But for the most part, them dudes are right there. Just like everybody else, man. You'd be surprised how many of y'all that are watching this that have done time have actually been around somebody that's got messed up charges that lied to you and you never knew. You saw that robbery paper. You saw, you read it all. Well, he robbed such and such on such and such date. But you ain't read that paper from 1994 when he did his first bid. So that leaves you to think that what he's in here on now means he's solid. Y'all gotta let go of the stigma that these dudes are just being tortured and that they just can't live inside of there. There may be a select few places in the United States that's applying that much pressure. But I can promise you that it's not like everybody's making it out to be. You don't know everything you think you know. Here's another fun fact for you. Everybody says, why don't y'all kill them? You come in with five, 10 years, 15 years. You have a release date. At the moment that you kill another inmate, they're going to give you life. They're going to take you, take you back to court, and then from there, they're going to re-sentence you. From there, they're going to ship you to a prison so far away that they got to pump the sunlight in, that the atmosphere and your breathing changes because of how high up you are in the mountains. If you think that this is some movie, you know, when nobody's looking, you're just going to grab somebody, pull them over into the broom closet, and kill them and nobody's going to tell on you you don't realize what day and age we live in somebody's always watching and somebody that always wants to go home everybody so if you think for one second that somebody ain't going to say Psst, Jay killed him Psst, I saw where he stashed a knife Psst, he did it because he's a sex offender Psst, let's get me back in court and I'll testify somebody's going to tell on you you got kids at home, a wife, a mother, family members, a job waiting on you. You're going to throw it all away behind that piece of shit? You're going to call your kids and say, I'm never going to see my grandchildren that you're one day going to have. You say this to your eight-year-old daughter. You're going to grow up and be a woman. I'm never going to witness that. I'm never going to see you. Become the woman you're going to become. Never going to meet my grandkids. I'm going to watch my mother, my father, and everybody I love pass away. Because I'm about to go kill this piece of shit over here because he's a sex offender. Not many men are doing that. And the ones that are, are the ones that are crazy in the head. Or the ones that ain't never, ever going home. I've met some guys that had family members that had fallen victim to stuff like that. And they reacted. I've heard about guys in the news that were put in the cell with somebody that done something to one of their family members and they reacted. The average inmate might kick his ass, might beat him up, might take his stuff, might make his life a living hell. When it comes to pushing that blade and taking somebody up out of here, taking a life and having that blood on your hands and going back in front of that judge, you know what he's not going to hear? Well, look, your honor. That man was a sex offender, so I killed him. Life! That's what he's going to say. Then you come in my prison and just start killing people because of why they're in here. I've already judged them and gave them their time. Now you took it upon yourself to re-sentence them to death. I'm going to judge your ass. And I sentence you to the same. You will die inside the Department of Corrections. I remand you to the state, to the Department of Corrections, until the day you die. Have a nice day. Get him out of my courtroom. That's the truth. That's the reality. Dudes do have bad days. And take it out on people. That's a fact. I've seen it happen. I've seen dudes that ain't never killed nobody in their life. Kill for the first time while incarcerated. I've seen dudes that weren't. Sex offenders get killed. And sex offenders continue to walk around. I've seen dudes torment them. Rob them. Beat them up. Slap them up. Rape them. Do all the things imaginable. Well, what about the ones you don't know about? Because for the most part, they're right there. Might be sleeping in the cell with you. And you never know it. Never. That's the reality that we live in. 
Anyways, I'm glad my eyebrows are back. Glad my head is no longer lopsided. Glad it grew, what, two inches on top. I got two ears now. My beard don't just fall off. Yeah. To whoever did that, you are a piece of shit. If you got a problem with me, I ain't hard to find. Check me out. Pull up on me and tell me you're the one that made that thing about me. Do that to my face. Otherwise, just a little bitch. Straight up. A little Twinkie eating, dog molesting, grandma's dress wearing. Yeah. <laughs> bitch. Don't you ever put a bone on my name like that? But that's what they're going to do. When they can't find anything out bad about you, they'll go as far as doing what they just did to me. That was a first for me. I think that's first for everybody. We've seen dudes get exposed on this YouTube. We've seen dudes get called out. But you can't do that to me. I am who I say I am. And that's why the world rocks with me. That's why y'all love me. Because I stand behind everything I say. I say what I mean and I mean what I say. No damn sex offender. I slap the shit out you. I, I, I challenge you. I dare you. And you live in the Richmond area. You live in Virginia. You're probably somebody I know. Because that was a news channel 12 thing you posted me to. Pull up. Pull up to me face to face and tell me you did that. You won't. That's why you didn't attach your name to it. You wanted to make it seem real. But you're a clown. And chances are, you're the one with something to hide. You're the one with skeletons in your closet. Because only a weirdo would do some shit like that. Like I said... People ask me why I call them Lewinsky's. Because when it comes to this shit right here, I'm Bill Clinton. Yeah. Put me in your mouth can make you famous, Lewinsky. Talking about me. Having me in your mouth can make you known. Nobody knew who Lewinsky was until Bill got up in her mouth, did they? Who the hell is Monica Lewinsky? Oh, she did what to the president? Yeah, that's what y'all are. But y'all that want to come at me. You're a bunch of little Lewinsky's. Trying to get famous off of having me in your mouth. How's my taste? Little bitches. <laughs> yeah, I usually don't respond to anything like that. But I don't have a problem to. Before you ever tarnish my name, who I am, how I've lived 41 years on this earth, I'll speak on it. And nobody can ever come forward and say nothing about me like that. I pray I find out who did it. Anyways. <laughs> these jails, institutions, these prisons, these Lewinsky's. Oh, just crazy world inside this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams' Let's Live Life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do. Salute.